Good morning. It's back to the sew machine, back to the old grind, back to the girls, uh, school girl sampler blocks. Oh my goodness. Look at that. We're on block 39 and 40. 39 and 40. I was cleaning out some stuff and I found an old, old Kathleen, uh, one of Kathleen's books in my uh, stash. I was so excited to put it with the rest of them. So that was kind of fun and exciting. Uh, this week's blocks are, uh, again, pretty simple, uh, but we're going to do them together. Look what Cappy did. She made her flamingos go. So I thought this one was upside down, but he's, he's standing and he's got, you know how flamingos do. So actually this is the front, cause I kept going, which way, which way, which way, but this is actually the way she knows about flamingos. I know nothing about flamingos except for they're pink. And uh, I love this one. Oh, I've even got it sideways. Look at the little flamingo in the middle there. Got to get him going right. This was an interesting block out of my Kim Deal fabric. I uh, I was digging and digging and didn't realize that uh, she had that plaid. So that was kind of fun. And then I used my wacky background to kind of tie some other uh, fabrics in. So we're going to be making those pretty soon. But I got some share. I got to do with you. I got to share with you my weekend. My week actually um, got some more uh, potato chip blocks done I'm not liking these dark ones with the light I think these are my favorites the ones with the uh, center and then the star points are a different color and then the background is light and these are okay they're kind of boring though and uh, I did not care for the way this one turned out at all. I think that one's kind of good. So, but anyway, still going to put them in my box. Look at this. So, I don't have a lot of these uh, dark ones. I'll probably still keep making them if the fabric, if, you know, whatever I have left over, uh, I'll start making those. Uh, keep making those. But these are my favorites, and you can probably tell that by how many of them I have. Now, speaking of potato chip blocks, I'm going on a retreat. I leave Saturday. I won't be back until the next Monday, but Peter and I are going to film on Friday, and so you'll have another episode. You'll have 40, block 41 and 42 next week. Don't fear. Peter said he would be willing to do that for us. So, anyway, um, I thought, well, I'm going. Uh, Lisa Bongine is going to be at the retreat with us. And I had a whole bunch of scraps left over for a quilt I made for Moda. It was her Liberty Gatherings. It was red, white, and blue. And so I had enough scraps. Can you believe this? I cut out 75 potato chip blocks ready to be sewn together as my leader and enders when I go on retreat. So I'm anxious to see how many I get done. And I'll be sharing that when I get done, when I get back, but they're, they're going to be red, white, and blue. So they won't go in with this collection, but there'll still be some fun potato chip blocks. But look at all that. Oh my goodness. I can't really stand it. Thank you, Vicki, for my tin. I always have to thank Vicki because she got me that tin. So my potato chip blocks, yummy and fun. Man, did I get inspired to sew this week. I tell you what, we had a new Kim Deal fabric come in, and you know how I am about Kim Deal, and I think if you've been watching the video, you probably already know about chocolate-covered cherries. But what you don't know is <laughs> I made a runner. Now, I don't know if I should keep on going and make a small quilt or if I should keep it as a runner. And what I think, if I keep it as a runner, I'm going to take this light fabric and make a really thin little border and then put an outer border on it. So, uh, I, this is my favorite fabric of the whole collection, but I do love that fabric too. So, I, I can't decide. Well, and I love that. Well, okay, I love them all. That's just all there is to it. They're all so yummy and delicious. But chocolate covered cherries. And um, it turned out really fun, don't you think? These little blocks here sew in at three inches. Aren't they adorable? Look at that little thin border. Oh, I love them. Love it. This is out of a book, uh, Stripology 2. And you know how I love my Stripology ruler. 
So, you know, I had to do this and I, I uh, had that stripology. I love all the stripology books. I know we've showed this on some other videos. We haven't actually showed it on my video. We have little kits here. They're $20. And it's the Nantucket mini charm bag. And we have these cute little charms that go with it. And I just thought it was the cutest little bag. Oh, so adorable. You could fit so many fun things in there. So blue is not my color. So I went home, I mean, I got the pattern and I went home and I found, let me get these out of the way. And I found some fun Kathy Holden fabric that I've had in my stash for a while. We had this, but it's all gone now. It's an older collection. But look, it's gum wrappers. Did you ever do that, Peter, where you took the gum wrappers and you made chains out of them? Uh-uh. No, you're too young. We used to take gum. I don't even know if they even have sticks of gum anymore. But uh, we took the sticks of gum and we took the wrapper and we folded it and then we interlocked them and we made chains out of them. So that was kind of fun. And then on the inside here is some newsprint that's kind of fun. And this wild and crazy olivey green zipper. And then look, we got these in. So cute. So cute. And then I ordered these from the eBay. It says, handmade by Dawn Cornell. Ah, I'm going to start putting that on all my little bags. I think that's so cute. So anyway, so that's a fun one. Now on hers whoever made this one they used just regular batting and i used that uh soft and stable or bolzel you know that foam stuff i really like the way that gives that structure so i think that's kind of fun so anyway if you want to do a blue one here the kit is right here and uh we have several of these but i wanted to make mine wacky my friend lenine who is also my boss here at Always in Stitches. She came to a, a staff meeting the other day with this little travel case. This is what the pattern looks like. Am I glaring, Peter? <clears throat> okay, this is what it's called, uh, just a travel case. And what it is, you open it up, it's got some Velcro here. You open it up and it's got all these pockets to put all your gadgets. Well. It's going to be my new safe haven for my triangle square up ruler. And then I've got a little mat. And then I've got my rotary cutter in here and some scissors and a pin. And I've got some needles and, and straight pins here. I added this little thing to it just simply because I wanted a place to put my pins and needles. But isn't that cute? So, when I get back from retreat in a couple weeks, I'm, I'm going to give myself a couple weeks because I get back on a Sunday and then Monday I come to work so I won't have time to get all the steps prepared. But I want to do a tutorial on this and we can all make it together. So, come in and get your pattern. We have several patterns. Come in and get your pattern. Uh, get your fabric all cut. And uh, I'm going to teach you some little tricks and tips on how to do this. So that's going to be fun. It doesn't take a lot of fabric. I just use some kind of, this is again that Kathy Holden line. I bought that whole line. I just loved it. I just thought it was just the, the funnest line. Uh, all these antique buttons. It's just straight up my alley. This is some antique old uh, like tablecloths or old curtainy fabrics that she and then, I, of course, I love this needlepoint fabric. That was my favorite of the whole line. I bought four yards of that stuff. So I'm, I'm doing all kinds of things with that. So look forward to making a tutorial with that, okay? Let's go over to the sewing machine, Peter. This week's blocks are, are pretty simple. We'll start with uh, block number 39, which is called the Red Cross. And I stay pretty true to the Red Cross theme here in mine here, and I have also done it here. And Cappy just went helter-skelter and did the Flamingo Flash uh, on her uh, Red Cross. So there you go, to each his own, right? Everybody beats uh, Liz with a different beater. How does that, with the drummer and all that? I, I never did get that saying, but anyway. 
uh, moves to a different drummer, beats to a different drummer. Maybe somebody can put it in the comments what that saying really is because, you know, I'm kind of confused today about that. Oh my goodness, I uh, was changing my thread and I forgot. Peter and I had to have a powwow while uh, we were getting ready for the club, getting ready for the video today. And I have completely not threaded my sewing machine. Did you know that you can pop that off of there? And that doesn't, I like for my thread to come over. So I'm just gonna put a little disc in there like that. And I like for my thread to come over itself. So I'm gonna thread my machine real quick. Always make sure that your, uh, uptake lever is in the mo upright most position and you do that by just touching your uh, needle up needle down button and I'm going to go in here and hopefully my threader is doesn't know it's a Monday I'm a little low on the bobbin thread there to bring my bobbin thread up again I use my needle up needle down button I mean, I use that button a lot for a lot of different things. I need to start sewing. Oh, what am I going to do? Take off my shoes. Look at my fun socks. A little quilt pattern. Aren't they cute? Okay. Okay. So there's that. Let's get ready to sew. Rock and roll. Now, um... We have this uh, weed growing in our yard. I don't know where it's at. I have searched the, the whole yard over, but it has these little prickly balls on it. I can't find it, but Chloe sure can find it. And I call them giggle weeds. They stick to her and she's a white dog. So, I mean, she has these little green prickly balls all over her. I think her Uncle Jamie got a little bit upset with me, but I can't find them. I don't know where they're at. I scouted and scouted the whole backyard trying to find them. I can't find them. And she got into a big mess of them this last weekend. And uh, Uncle Jamie was just not happy. But if I can't find them, so much. Can't keep my eye on her every second of every day, her and dad. Um, so, I don't know what we're going to do with her. But, today was the sweetest morning. Biscuit came in. Biscuit is my, uh, Biscuit and Gizzy. They're my other two schnauzers. I don't talk about them a lot because they're grumpy old men. They don't do lots of good, fun things like Chloe and Gizzy. I mean, like Chloe does. But Biscuit came up to me and wanted to sit on my lap, which never happens, ever, 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 and gave me morning kisses. Little gentle. She, uh, he gives little gentle kisses. They're so sweet. So that, that just made my day. That just made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Not prickly like Chloe. Chloe's got those prickles. Her daddy did, he used the comb and he did uh, comb her out and get them all out. But uh, we've got to find where they're coming from. Jimmy thought they were in the one big corner by our ornamental grass, but I went back there and I couldn't find them at all. So, I don't know even what they're called. I have to look them up online. Thank you. See what they're called. I've always called them giggle weeds. You ever heard of anything called a giggle weed before, Peter? Yeah, that's what you called them. Yeah, I mean, it's up on the sides. Peter, you're so funny. Yeah, Dawn, I've heard of them. You've been talking about them for the last half an hour, for heaven's sakes. I've heard about them. <laughs> oh, fun. Now, some people, when they make nine patches, that's what we're doing here with our uh, Red Cross block. We're just making a simple nine patch. Sometimes they'll take strips 
you know, a strip of a light, a strip of a dark, and a strip of a light. And then a strip of a dark, a strip of a light, a strip of a dark, kind of make them opposite. And then chop them up. If you have to make a whole bunch, that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, and then sub-cut them. That would be the way to go. But since we're only making this one, we just cut the squares. And you notice when I cut these off the off the uh, string, how I'm uh, strip piecing them, I lay them back right where I found them so that they don't get out of order. On this one, it's not that big of a deal, but get yourself into a habit and that way, when it does, when it is important, you'll already have that habit established. At home, my pin cushion sits right here on my sewing machine. I have one of those things that you don't slip your phone off the dashboard, those gummy things. I don't know what they're called, but anyway, I have one of those. My, my machine is much wider at home than this one. And I have my pin cushion, it sits right there like that. And so if you'll notice, sometimes when I go to get a pin, I'll, I'll go up here because I'm a creature of habit that way. And um, so everything in its spot, right, Peter? Dawn has to have everything in its spot. And if it's not, what happens? Place for everything and everything in its place. Yeah. Now, could you Velcro that to that machine? You probably could get some Velcro and put it on the bottom. I didn't think of that. And put the Velcro on your machine and just mm -hmm. Velcro that on. I bet you could. I bet you could. You want to do something where it doesn't permanently stay on there. Because when you do your bobbin thread, you do have to take that off. So if I were to use Velcro, I'd use the soft part on this. And the uh, prickly part on this. So that... Um, when I wound my bobbin, it would the prickly part wouldn't hold up the disturb the thread. Yeah, I'm almost out of bobbin thread. I'm gonna have to. Hopefully, it'll hold out till I get this block, these two blocks done. But if not, we'll have to pause. You won't know anything about it. Peter is getting so good at this pausing and interjecting and all kinds of fun stuff on the um oh what do you call that where you're uh, editing editing that's the word i wanted to on use on the video editing editing on the video okay i'm going to do a leader and an ender just simply because i want to get this out of the sewing machine so i can press it and add this other one to it Okay, so I've got part of my nine patch done. And some people, when they make a nine patch, they like to press to one side. Like if you were pressing to the dark, you could interlock these seams. And that's all fine and good. And I used to do it that way. But I want my block to lay flatter than that. So I press open. So here we go. Another thing, by habit, you know, started pressing open. Now I press everything open. And on that um, Kim Deal stripology table runner I made, it said to press one way, but I pressed open and got along just fine with it. That's why it looks as good as it does. It's so not. Oh, I had so much fun making those blocks. And it's scrappy. Uh, I bought a fat quarter bundle. And what I did was I just cut a strip. Well, actually, I cut two strips off of each fat quarter. And then the little background, the little light lines, I used just one uh, fat quarter for that. And I was able to get that many little blocks out of it. That was pretty awesome. So, okay, I'm going to cut this now. I'm gonna get my handy dandy, you know, my favorite square up ruler, rotary cutter. I'm gonna love that little travel uh, case that I made because, you know, anytime, if you carry it with you, you're ready at any time. You can be sizing up 
I'm always got little things I can cut into one inch squares or something, you know, and I'll always have a, a little kit with me that allow me to do that. So I think that's going to be fun. I'm just going to carry that with me everywhere I go. Well, it's nice because I sit across from you at the meeting, the Friday meeting that we have every day, uh -huh. every Friday at the store. Right. I'm knitting my I'm sock mm -hmm. and you're cutting off your dog ears. Yeah, I'm just trimming up. You're trimming up your triangles. triangles. From projects I've had from, you know. So that's uh, nice and compact months. to just yeah. have at the, have oh, at the yeah, meeting. Yeah, everything, everything at your disposal. Everything you need. Everything you need. It's even got an ink pen in there. So if I need to take notes at the yeah. meeting, I can. So yeah, I'm nice. You know what I was thinking of before at dawn? What? Um, a watercolor kit. Because I think oh. watercolor brushes, that's oh. what I was thinking when I was filming it. Oh, Peter, that would be awesome. Because I'm teaching myself watercolors, and I was like, well, that would hold my brushes, that would oh, hold my yeah. paper, that would hold my a, a small palette. Yeah, nice. So I, I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. Ooh, excellent. So see, we've inspired Peter to do something creative for kids. I love that. You know, we can all be an inspiration to each other. That's why we encourage you to uh, go ahead and uh, post pictures on our insiders group. I wish they could post pictures on the YouTube, but we just can't. That's just part of the process. But you can go over to the insiders group and post some pictures. Now, which way do we want these to go? See, they, they kind of go uh, opposite each other like that. So let's see. This really is supposed to be like that. So let's put the red ones. Let's go like this. Just like that. Now, there was no turquoise in, in my line of fabric. Uh, so there was in the Kim Deal fabric. So I was able to do the colorway a little bit like she did. But uh, for this colorway, I used that gold. And I really like that red with that gold, don't you, Peter? I do. You nailed that one. Because that it, red, that red, it pulls out the orange that's in that red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like it's it. like a, it's more of an earthy red. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you that tutorial on that travel case. That It goes together really easy. And there's no quilting, there's no zipper, you know, it's just really nice. So, be packing both of my clappers to take to retreat with me. You know what we ought to do sometime, Peter, is we ought to uh, make a, show everybody what, what you should take on a retreat. You know, mm -hmm. all the how things. To, how to pack, how to for, pack retreat. for a retreat. Now, Cappy, <clears throat> if you follow Cappy on Facebook, some people do, some people don't. But anyway, if you follow Cappy on Facebook, you'd see that she put a picture. Her kitty cat got in her suitcase and didn't want to. I mean, she the kitty cat wanted to go with her, I think, or was just being nosy. This is a true test of if your uh, quarter-inch seam allowance and your pressing techniques work. Because now... This strip is supposed to be exactly the size of this pieced block. And if it's not, then you know something's up. If it's too big, then your seam allowances are too short. And if it's too little, your seam allowances are too big or you're not pressing correctly. Or you didn't cut the pieces out. The three elements to an accurate block are cutting accurately piecing a quarter inch accurately and pressing accurately. so those are the three elements that make your blocks yay or nay thumbs up or thumbs down right peter that's right you're always saying thumbs up or thumbs down so So I'm going to go ahead and sew this other corner on before I press. Yeah, this is how when I do my uh, leaders and enders at home, I, I do them with the potato chip blocks. So this is how I get so many potato chip blocks done. Is because when I made that, the uh, chocolate covered cherries quilt, 
from the Strophology 2 book. I was able to get a lot because I was doing a lot of beginning and ending. I'm anxious for you to see the red, white, and blue ones because they are so cute. I've got them in this little uh, tub. You know how I am about organizing. <clears throat> I got them all, all ready to go. I have, you know, <coughs> I have them in little sets. Just pick up one, one set of, of cuttings and away I go. How do you organize for your potato chip blocks? Are you doing potato chip blocks, Peter? Uh-uh. No? You've got too many other things. Iron's in the fire. I horses was, in the barn. I was doing the one-inch nine-patch. Yeah. you got too many horses in the barn, Peter. I do like the one-inch nine-patches, though. Do you? Yeah. Okay. I love the... Well, they're easier. I love the potato chip blocks. But I was just stuck on the making those one inch nine patches that I just didn't start doing the potato chip blocks. Yeah. Well, when you I think the potato chip blocks are great for bigger scraps. Uh huh. Um, but I was really just excited about those nine patches. Yeah. Well, and there's all straight seams where uh, the uh, potato chip blocks have some diagonal seams. So they take a little bit more time. The just straight ones are just mindless. You just have them there. You know, and I have straight ones at home, too, because, you know, I like to be mindless. Well, I think the potato chips are great <laughs> because they use up the bigger pieces that you have. Exactly. And then if you have something that can't be made into a potato chip, you make it into the one-inch nine patches. Right, right. I'm not sure what they finish at. Two something? What, the potato chip blocks? No, the nine patch. Was it Well, if they start out at one, and you've got three of them in a row. One and a half. So that is, well, they'd be three-fourths, three-fourths, and three-fourths. What's three-fourths times three? Yeah, two and, two and a half, I think. Well, heck, we've got one over here. Let's just go get it and measure it. You know, I have all these. <laughs> You know me. Here's what he's talking about. He's talking about his little one-inch pieces, sewing them together. Two inches. I just think those are the coolest thing. Aren't they just so sweet? Yeah. So instead of, see, here I'm doing one and a half inches. Where it's practically the whole uh, Where this one is one inch. Because I'm compulsive. I'm obsessive compulsive have to do that. All right. Back to sewing on my Red Cross. Pin. I didn't pin all the seams. I'm going to kind of just feel that they are laid straight. Pick up a beginner. Yeah, just sew it. See, you don't even have to think about diagonal piecing. You just sew it together. When it's a straight seam like that, that makes it so nice. Oh, I could have sewed this together. Let me sew this on. I'm a little helter skelter myself today. I just am. Um, you know, I'm already ready to go. I'm already, my mind is already traveling down the road to the antique stores. Is your bag packed? Uh, it's not yet. I've got to clean out the van is my number one priority today. Uh, cleaning out the van. And then uh, I've got my lists. Are you a list maker? Because I'm a list maker. Um, yes and no. Not to the extent of making a list a full drawn out list but just a beginning list just to gather some ideas and that's it like just to throw some things down i don't actually check things off of it 
Yeah, I've got to think about things for a week and then I've got to make a list and then I've got to check the list off. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you just, it's a personality thing. See, now look, I've got my point. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when you stick your pen where the point is on the back, it's not always where the point is on the front. That, that time it was. Sometimes it could be a thread or two off. So you always wanna check that front to make sure that you're getting those points right together. Ooh, I love how that fits together. See, that just thrills me. I know. Just thrilling. Wonder why I love to sew so much, Peter. I mean, I wonder what it is about sewing that, well, I, I kind of do know. I know that it's, it's a creative thing, so it's using that part of my brain, but it also is a, a reflector of, of my everyday life. I mean, when you have a stressful uh, job or you have uh, lots of responsibilities or you have, um, you know, your life is kind of chaotic, your sewing time is just kind of like your yoga time. You know what I mean? I don't do yoga, but I'm, I'm assuming it's kind of the same thing. But in sewing, you don't have to get into those weird poses that you can't get out of. <laughs> You just sit down in your chair. Unless you're trying to reach behind your sewing cabinet to get the ruler that fell off the back. <laughs> now, there you go. That's some that's some yoga positioning there. So that's when you get your grabber. You know, I'm an old person, so I have one of those grabbers that you just get and grab things with. But anyway, so... Um, but I think it's sort of like yoga for old people, maybe. I don't know. I just, I just love to sew. I just... Uh, I didn't always love to sew. You know, when I painted, I didn't have time to sew. I didn't really know about sewing. Now, I really like how that turned out. That's real rich looking, don't you think? Yeah, very nice. What do you think, you guys? I think it's really rich looking. Now, compare it. Here, let's compare it to the three of us. There, look at that. Yeah, that's yeah. Beautiful. See, this one right here just knocks my socks off. I love that. I think that's really nice. Okay, let's get this one out of the sew machine with a leader, a uh, beginner and an ender, and uh, get it pressed, and then we will have our two blocks made. Uh, block number 39 was the Red Cross. Block number 40 is called Cotton Reels. When those cotton balls get rotten, you can't pick very much cotton. Now, I don't know <laughs> where that came from. Oh, my goodness. You might want to maybe bleep that out, Peter. I don't know. <laughs> that was some old-timey song. Have you ever seen a cotton field? Mm -mm. When we drive to no. Texas, which I mostly fly to Texas, but every once in a while I drive to Texas if I need my van. Uh, but yeah, on our way to Texas, we go past some cotton fields. Man, it's very interesting to watch see cotton grow. Um, uh, and then there's just white snow all along the road from where, you know, it's flown, it's kind of the winds caught it off the, off the bush. So anyway, let's see, how does this one go? It goes like that. So let's compare the three. There's the Kim Deal one. There's the Cappy one. Look at that. So cute. We did a good job this week picking out our fabrics. I love all the fabric choices. I'm trying to incorporate this background in a little bit more so that it it, it kind of is cohesive to the uh, to the design when I get ready to put it together. 
So remember to start looking, we're getting close. I mean, we're over half done. So you might want to start uh, looking through your books or looking through the Pinterest or looking through something to get some ideas on how you're going to set it if you're not going to do it like the front cover. Uh, I'm not going to do mine like the front cover. I'm not going to be showing you that uh, applique because that's just not my biz. That's not my thing. I do like to applique, but I'm out of it for right now. I'm just not in the mood, so that's why I'm not going to be appliqueing. Uh, so I'm going to find an alternative uh, setting for mine. Anything that takes a four and a half inch square, you can use any setting, or you can make up your own, whatever you want to do. So you will see me next week. But actually, I'll be at the retreat, but we're going to film Friday and uh, then look forward to when I get home to we're going to do the tutorial on the travel kit. OK, so happy sewing, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.